girl Ella back with another video. You already know what's going on. I am here as a servant of Christ, inspiring and driven to meet and exceed expectations. Expectations of yourself, expectations of your peers, expectations of the devil. Because he he seek to kill, steal, and destroy. But what? We're alive in Christ, so in and out of the heaven. Because we got the power of God, the spirit of God within us, and that's what we're talking about today. Can I be <laughs> Wait, are we recording? check this shirt check this shirt it says born again because what i'm born again in christ and i remember when i first started going to church i was like people kept asking me like am i born again and i was like that sounds a little crazy to me i don't understand what you mean i kept looking like i don't think i am because like if i was i would have thought i think i would have known and so um it reminds me of when nicodemus was talking to jesus and he was like kind of like confused on what it meant to be born again and it's like that's something that when you are, you are, and when you ain't, you ain't, and you'll realize that when you are, you're gonna know. And um, I didn't know at that time, and it's okay because not everybody is born again when they come to church. You have to be born again, you know what I'm saying? And so, when it comes down to it, today we will be talking about the gospel, and that's to get y'all, that's to get y'all um, acquainted, acquainted. There we go, acquainted with who our Lord and Savior is, who mine is. I hope he's yours too, because um. He's the way, the truth, and life. Okay? So, obviously, it comes a point in time where there is two opposite sides in the world. You're deeper into those two sides. But, um, let's start with, you got Jesus, God, Holy Spirit. And you got the devil. It's demons and evil spirits. That's a three-on-three. Three. That's a three-on-three three combo I'm going to give y'all. Now, truthfully, I don't want no combo. I just want them. Right? These three. And when it comes down to the gospel, the gospel is, okay, when I am evangelizing or talking to people about God, I'm spreading the gospel. And the gospel is the good news. And the good news is the news that Jesus Christ died on the cross to forgive our sins. He paid that price. They took his life. But what did he do? He resurrected. And when he resurrected, he brought the spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, here to be our, our tie between God and us. So we got like a little umbilical cord, right? Through the Holy Spirit that's connected with God. And he's constantly interceding for us to God. And the only way to God is through Jesus Christ. So, sounds like a lot, right? Boom, but we're going to break it down. We're going to break it down. Jesus was here before the world even was formed. Now, that sounds crazy, right? Because usually we know him to be the man, right? Nah, he was here before the world was formed. So, because he was here before the world was formed, right? He was here doing all of it. But he didn't come down until Mary had that baby in her stomach. And they called him Jesus. You know what I'm saying? He has many names. But let's just say Jesus is the name we all know, right? So, until he came and formed in that womb, right? He was with God. Now, God is sending him down to save us so that we don't have to be enslaved to sin. People don't really like the word sin, most likely, because they're in it. And truthfully, we all fall short of the glory of God. We all sin. But when you come to Christ, the option is there. And the, 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 the thought process is there to choose not to. Right? So we can keep that thought process over there. That thought process can stay over there. Because when you have it in your brain at all times, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. You're going to fall short. More often, because you are pushing that narrative in your brain. You're saying, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner, I'm a sinner. Christ knows my heart. Ah, 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 ah. That, that is not what God wants. He wants us to know that while we were in enslavement to sin, he's out on the cross so that we can be alive eternally with him. So when it comes down to that, right? Go get into a little scripture. God sent his son into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. So his first coming, we ain't going to get into the second coming right now, but his first coming? was so that he could save us. The devil didn't even know that that was his, his job on earth. That was his purpose. That was his calling. To come to the earth to save us through his blood. The blood was the sacrifice. And through him bringing that sacrifice to the world and being that, that sinless man for us to have an example to live out our life by, to intercede with us through God, by him doing that, he saved us. And you know how you hear people say, oh, I'm saved. I'm saved. What are you saved from? You saved from the devil. You saved from Satan. You saved from all those demonic forces that tried and they didn't succeed. Because what? We're alive in Christ and we have the power of the Holy Spirit following us. Now, right. Not everybody who claims to be saved is saved. That's just like if I claim to be a star basketball player. Some of y'all may not know that's not true. So I can sit over here and be like, yeah, so I was on the court today, right? And um, I made like five shots. Who would know that's true or not? 
only the people who know me. Now, because we know Jesus, we know what he did on that cross. You get what I'm saying? Because we know what he did on that cross, we understand that we are saved by him. But there's a certain level of understanding of what to do to be saved. And one of them is the belief. Now, that's what we're going to talk about today. I want y'all to understand that it first starts with the belief. It first starts with the understanding that he is Lord. It first, it's first brought about when you decide, I'm going to give my life to God. God is Jesus. Jesus is God. God is Jesus. Jesus is God. Now, truthfully, right, fam? Followers? Understanders? I want you to know that, truthfully, I'm still here learning with y'all. I'm still here going with y'all. But I know one thing. Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. And that's one thing I want you to understand to the extent of the gospel is that he died on the cross. But he resurrected. And he is alive. So he is not, he's not a dead man. Not a dead man walking. Nope. But he's alive. He's alive right now. At this moment. I can feel it. Okay? There is a presence that you feel. And so when it comes down to that, right, it first starts with the belief. So let me read that one more time. God sent his son to the world, into the world, not to judge the world, but to save the world through him. He just wants to love you. And if you walk up to somebody saying, God just wants to love you, um, they're going to be like, okay. But it's a certain amount of reverence you give to God by your daily life that shows that you love him back. God can love us so much and still we don't even acknowledge him you get what i'm saying so i want you guys to understand this is an acknowledgement acknowledgement the gospel is an acknowledgement that this is what he did this is what he did and this is what he's continuously doing for people day to day to day to day he is sending out his followers to save more souls some people on this that are watching may be saved some people may not be saved but i want you to know that truthfully me Ellen, i want you to be saved now, it's not just about being saved from going to hell. That's what I want you to get through your mind. It's not just being saved from going to hell. A lot of people will contest that hell is a place we call earth. Now, due to the fact that I got the Holy Spirit going with me, and I know I have a purpose called by God, I don't believe that. I don't believe that. But Jesus will give you rest. Jesus will make you feel not lonely. Jesus will make you feel understood. You get what I'm saying? Because it's a God presence. The more you get closer to him, it's more than just, oh, God in the sky, in the heavens. No, he is in a relationship with you. And the more you understand that, the more you grow with him, the more you understand that he's there for you no matter what. No matter what. And because you know he's there for you no matter what, you ain't got nothing to worry about because, bing, 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 Jesus is right there fighting for you. So, right, um, it's not just about not going to hell. It's about being with God while you're here and alive on earth because he has a purpose for you. And because he has a purpose for you, you have to be ready and willing to speed through and grab that purpose run that race understand who you are understand who you are in christ because a lot of people think they know who they are but no they've just been mind turned onto things that are of this world everything that they turned on the screen everything that they turned on the music everything you're being crafted by the world by your friends by the people who surround you your acquaintances your your colleagues your mom your dad they might not even know what's best for you they might not even know your purpose the only person who knows that Jesus, and he's right there with you. But you got first, what? Believe in him. And that's the first step into the relationship. When you first get with somebody, right? When you first meet somebody, you gotta believe you trust them, right? God never fails. So you trust a relationship over God that never fails. That's something you gotta think about. How many things do we trust that let us down? A lot of things. You can trust the foundation of a bridge and it still could break. God and his foundation, Jesus and his foundation, never fails. So I want you guys to take that away from this video. Jesus never fails. So even if you are confused on why the, the, the cross and the this and this and this and this and this and this, and this, and this right, what I want you guys to take from this video right now, right now is that Jesus loves you. He died on the cross for your sins and he wants a relationship with you. And through that relationship, you will understand those things because God gives you the wisdom. You think everybody on this earth was born with a talent just to use it for their own good? No. No, there's a purpose connected to every single talent, gift, that every thought that you had, your every imagination, everything. He said, oh, I need it. I need an element on this earth right now because she has a purpose. I need it. Maybe there's a Sally listening to this. I needed a Sally. I needed a Billy. I needed a John. I needed these people because they have a purpose for me. And because they have a purpose for me, the world is going to be such a better place. But that only comes when you believe in Jesus, not just G-O-D. G-O-D could be many different gods, not the big G-O-D little G.O.D.s. Because there's a whole bunch of little G.O.D.s growing up in, up in this world. 
But we serve the big G-O-D. Big G-O-D. Big Jesus. You know what I'm saying? So, right. God sent his son down to earth to show the way to be saved from the sins of the world and be transformed and renewed through the Holy Spirit, through Christ. You obviously heard Christ-like, Christ-conscious. I, I don't like that word. We're not going to say anything about that in this video. But the awareness that Christ is a sinless being, a sinless being, a sinless person who gives us the willpower to fight every single force that comes against us. So if we don't have that, we're most likely fighting on our own. And God's always there. He's always watching you. But are you his child serving him? It's just like if you have parents, right? A lot of parents be like 18, get out. 18, go on your own. Think about it. They still your parents. They still love you. They still over there in their house watching over you. They call you. They let you know that they're there sometimes. But are you in service of your parents? Are you going to help them? Are you going to call them? Are you going to give them some satisfaction to their life that they gave you? He gave you life. So because he gave you life, we have nothing more in this world but to worship him with our body, with our mind, with our actions that we commit in the streets yeah a lot of people like to say oh god knows my heart but what's your heart doing they don't want to talk about that they want to talk about the sins that they commit why because it allows them to be vulnerable and once they are vulnerable jesus steps in people have this hard outer shell this hard prideful shell that they live in nowadays where it prevents them from understanding that this this world is not surface level it's big spiritual and everything that we go through is big spiritual. Because it's big spiritual, we have no choice but to operate in the spiritual. If you were to just operate in the humanity of humanness, you would get pulled there, there. Like I said in the last video, pulled in every which way. You better hope that you're holding on. But with Jesus, bing, 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 he's fighting for you. He's fighting with you, beside you, carrying you, lifting you up, strengthening you. You could be tired, and then pray, pray, pray. Boom, Jesus is like, you just feel a sense of like, I got the strength of the lord that's crazy and i didn't even know this power was a, a, a thing i went on a tangent but it's just the love that i have for god that i just be like talk, 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 and i'm just bing, 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 bing. and i said one more scripture for y'all i have been crucified with christ and i no longer live but christ lives in me the life i now live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me being crucified to the cross with jesus means i no longer live that life that's not me no more. That's not. And it's like the more I understand that I am not that person anymore, the more I'm crafted into who God really wanted me to be in the first place. God just wants the best for you. You just want what you want for yourself. Do you want to be great or do you want to be good enough? Because if you're good enough for yourself right now, then when it comes down to the time where you're in a, in a rut, who do you call on? If you're calling on him in a rut, I'm not calling on him every day. Every day will be a breeze. Every day will feel like I'm going through stuff right now, but I don't look like it. I don't. It's, it's a choice. And the, the more you understand that it's a choice, it's either God, Jesus, or the devil. There's no other God that's going to save you. Save you? Because everybody out here believes they're saving themselves. No. The person who got you up out of that was God. Get that straight. Bing, 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 bing. God, nothing else. But it's the re rever reverence you have for God, for Jesus, that separates you and allows you to really be called and moved into that purpose. You want to be great. Serving your purpose on this world is what everybody's looking for. But people are searching for it. Why not seek it? It's already written. You are put here, pink, on this world, on this earth, for a reason. Why not seek it in the person who sent you in the first place? You sent to your mother who? By God. So that you can figure it out. So let's figure it out together. With Jesus. Keep going again. The gospel of Jesus Christ, right? Um, I love you guys. Truthfully, I went on a tangent. And this video could have a part two. I will decide that when I get through with what I get through. <laughs> and whatever that is, is whatever it's going to be. And I love y'all. Christ died on the cross for our sins. So... Come to him, and he will show you the way, because he's the way, and he's the truth, and that's it.